Hey, it's the riot. Oh, we just had a really good stretch. It's a good stretch. You know, I'm sorry I cut it short. I should have just, we should have started while you were stretching. I agree with you. <laughs> I do. And uh, part of me is also sorry that we that messed that you up. Couldn't just we well, just, let if it, it comes back and you want to stretch again while we're talking, you just do it again. Okay, great. Sure. Hey, podcast, don't forget tomorrow night at 9 Eastern. The Riot is going to be live on Facebook. So if you don't like us on Facebook yet, hello. You can go to Radio U Riot or just our Radio U page if you go ahead and subscribe and like us and then get notified and then just be ready to go tomorrow at 9. Yeah, so uh, you'll may- want to make sure you do that uh, and you'll get a chance to spend some extra time with us. Uh, you'll hear in the podcast today the McNugget epic journey continues. Um, we've got, uh, oh, my sellout button. <laughs> Uh, we talk Ready Player One, hating the Olympics, yep. Nikki going for a phone detox, Groot being dead, Chris Pratt praying for people. It's the worst thing ever. Uh, urine therapy, oh, depression, I hated that one. and Babs clones. You got a lot of good stuff, though, guys. A lot of good stuff. So I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy the podcast today as much as Nikki and I enjoyed making it. If you don't want to uh, miss out on anything else, just a reminder, Radio You Riot on Facebook. And then also go ahead and subscribe to our Radio You Riot YouTube channel. That way, if we do any interviews you miss out, it's located there. All right. Well, you guys enjoy the podcast. and uh, Have well, a wonderful day. If nothing else, you'll see us tomorrow. <laughs> it's Bye. the riot. The Worst of the Riot box set is now available nowhere because we know you wouldn't want it anyway. It's the Worst of the Riot on Radio U. Nikki, we've even talked about this. We've talked, uh, we've talked, and then we've talked about talking about it. Yeah. And now I've got to talk and talk about talking about it. I'm, of course, referring to McDonald's, which has now somehow has gone from a minor foothold in our life to basically running our days. <laughs> Don't worry. It'll be over with by after tomorrow. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> tell them, Nikki, what did you do yesterday at lunch? I, and then I'll tell you what I did. Well, let me go back even one more step before we are doing a riot anniversary show tomorrow night. It's true. And that is going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And you can watch us host a special show tomorrow night through our Facebook pages at Radio U and Radio U. Riot. So we decided we were going to try the Szechuan sauce from McDonald's. But that's not good enough. Uh, so we decided we were going to try that during the show. And then yep. it was like, well, wait a minute. We started looking. There's all these sauces we still haven't tried. Mm-hmm. So then it became, <laughs> why don't we try to get one of every dipping sauce mm-hmm. from McDonald's? Mm-hmm. And so yesterday I tried to get one of every dipping sauce and I, I couldn't get all of them, but I at least tried. I was so embarrassed. I think it's amazing. And you scored sweet and sour. I did. Tangy, tangy barbecue, barbecue. Szechuan sauce. And Szechuan sauce. And I already had sriracha Big Mac sauce. Okay. And I already had ranch. Okay. I went to another McDonald's yesterday afternoon, and they only had barbecue, sweet and sour, and uh, honey mustard. Okay. Oh, you got the honey mustard. So okay, I good. got the honey mustard. So what does that leave us with? Uh, we still need honey and the habanero one. Isn't there an habanero sauce? Uh, yes, and then there's also a, like, there's honey, Buff- honey mustard, and, like, tangy mustard or something like that. There's or too many. Mustard, there's or, too many. I don't know what it is. I'm but afraid some are regional. <laughs> We're just not going to find them. That, I'm, that could, could be, be a possibility. Like, it could be. The lady was like, because I asked her, I was like, you know, well, I'd like to get a couple. How many sauces do you have? And, like, she just, I, I didn't even get a chance to get into, like, you know, we're doing this thing and whatever. I could tell it was just like she was a no nonsense. Like, look, I don't care. This is what we I got. I don't know you're why you're it. asking about all these sauces. I got three sauces. Pick a sauce and get out. Actually, I could tell you why. Because while I was waiting, everybody was trying to do the Szechuan sauce, and so yeah. they were just coming in, and be like two sauces. They were all wanting more than the one, okay. and then they were getting charged afterwards. Man, you, you know that's the worst. You know they started the day, and the manager was like, I don't care what they say. They're only getting one sauce. <laughs> Just one and sauce. And then every person that came through the line, I, can I get two? Now, see, I didn't buy, because uh, they charge you for some of them, but they didn't charge me for, like, the seconds of every sauce. Okay. So they only had that. We still need to also find the new signature sauce, which is their Big Mac sauce. But I thought you just said you had that. I have the Sriracha Big Mac sauce. What the what? What the what? Well, here's what I was thinking, okay? Uh, Get to another McDonald's is what we're thinking. Well, I'll have you know that on my way in this morning, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop and get a sausage biscuit, and I'm going to say to them, hey, would it be possible for me to get some honey, yeah. which makes sense, yeah. and then also to get some of your tangy hot mustard or whatever? And I thought, that'll be two more off the list right now. And I went to that McDonald's and just sat at the window for a while. <laughs> no 
Clint's helping you? They're just like, you don't even want the sandwich, do you? We don't hear that. (laughs) We we don't hear that. Nobody hears that. Don't don't go to the microphone. (laughs) Don't let him in. Nobody hears that. Oh, it's actually it's a honey mustard sauce, a habanero ranch sauce, and the spicy buffalo. We still need. So we're close, but we're not all the way there. One, two, three, four. Well, five. Why is there so many? But here's what I thought. Okay, Thursday tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, at like what? 7.30, 7.30, 8 o'clock, I'm going to go to McDonald's and get 50 McNuggets. It doesn't even sound sickening. It, and my thought was, is that when I do that, yeah. I should be able to say to them, like, okay. Clear it out. Here's what I, I need. I'm going to need the following. If you want me to buy the these following. 50 nuggets. You're going to have to and put me into the following. Tell me, and I'll get the oven warmed up here, and we're just going to put them in put the them oven. Just right in there. Oh. That's actually a great idea. That'll keep them warm, because mm-hmm. we don't want them cold. And then during our anniversary show, we're going to try all the dipping sauces. Yeah. And, and do a combined one where we put them all together. Consequently, yesterday, I think I had 11 nuggets. You came back with 20. I believe I had five, and then I had six in the afternoon <laughs> when I stopped to get. I know. I'm just like, What's the, I, It I, just started. We don't know. Somehow, I inadvertently ate 11 chicken McNuggets yesterday. And you might have more today. <laughs> Having a bad day? Blame the riot. Everyone else does. And in fairness, it's probably their fault. Radio U. So yesterday, I noticed at my desk, I've got this button. On my bag now, it says my neighbor, it's Totoro, but oh, I always from, call it Totoro. From Doctor it's, Who? No, it's not from Doctor Who. It's an anime, oh, actually. Okay. Uh, it's popular, Miyazaki, Studio oh, yeah. Ghibli. Um, yeah, it's like it's a thing. So I was like, you know what? This is sat at my desk since I went to Disney World two years ago. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes it blends into the desk and then he never sees it again. I'm actually not sure even how it got from... I know that obviously I bought it at Disney and I brought it back. But how did it get from home to here? Yeah, I have no idea how it got on my desk. But it's been there, as I said, for, you know, two years. And I while I was in Epcot, I bought a Gundam toy and a Totoro badge. And so yesterday I stuck it on my bag and I posted it on Instagram. I was like, hey, look what I found. And it's funny to me how many people are like, yeah, but you haven't even seen the movie. <laughs> I I like, these, wait a minute, guys. <laughs> it's a button. <laughs> and all these people where it was like, all of a sudden, it's weird to me that no matter what you buy or do or whatever, there's going to be people that are like, yeah, but you're not hardcore like I am. They're going to act that you're not good enough for the button. It's like, you realize we're talking about an animated children's film. Or it Japan. looks like a, a big bunny. <laughs> you get that, right? It's like, yeah, but how hardcore are you about it? Look at my tattoo. Do you have one of these tattoos? Have you heard it in the original Japanese? Did you go to Japan to watch it? Did you get your button from there? Is that where it's from? Is that one of those stupid Epcot buttons? Everybody knows that Epcot pushes a fake Turner button. You need to get the real one. Just like, wow. Has that turned you off from having the button on your bag now? I thought about it. Yeah. I thought about just being like, what do I even want a button on my bag for? I just decided it had sat there long enough. I guess actually the real answer here is like, look, bro, every time you put a button on your bag, you don't need to be putting it on Instagram. Because, like, you don't even, have you, are you a real Instagram, is that real Instagram? You're not supposed to share like that. What version of Instagram are you posting with? What you're learning is it's just not going to be good enough no matter what you do. Now, am I exaggerating? Maybe a little, but the undercurrent exists where it's just like, oh, here comes another guy acting like he's a Johnny Come Lately fan of the new hot thing, which, by the way, it's not. no one even knows what it is. <laughs> None of you guys, I tell you this, there are like two of you in the audience that are like, oh yeah, I saw that one time. No, it's not even a thing. But I've actually found that the more niche or niche, I can never get it right, like a product is, the worse it is. You're like, oh, no one will even know what this is. But then one guy's like, man, you're such a freaking poser. Like, what's your problem? Look at you. Like, everybody thinks you're so cool now. And it's like, no. Aw, someone has to ruin it. No, I didn't feel ruined. I just thought it was an interesting brush with a corner of the internet. There's like, oh, here's another one. Here they go. Writing handbook for the sellout. Putting the button on your bag. Putting a button on his bag. How dare like he you. even knows what that movie is about. <laughs> do you even carry a bag? <laughs> Bro, do you even bag? <laughs> so just So congratulations on putting that on your bag. I think we should have all celebrated. You didn't put in your post. Two years later, I finally 
you know, put this on your back. Then people maybe would have laid off that and celebrated that, that you I've actually done something. You cleaned something off your desk. I did. Now I'm carrying my clutter with me. <laughs> <laughs> so before, it's off your desk. before it was just clutter, but now I'm carrying the Congratulations. clutter. Congratulations. Yes. You know what? This is a step in the right direction. Well, you had a big day yesterday, didn't you? Huge. Anything else you got off your desk? Um,. Well, I still have those nugget sauces up there. Okay, so. now those will stay if we don't use those forever. Hey, that's those keep. <laughs> All right, those don't go bad. I seriously think they're good till 2020. <laughs> My favorite part of the worst of the riot when they shut up and the music starts. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Hey, let's talk about what you're watching on TV commercials lots of them now of course we could talk about how the radio U spring fundraiser is coming up in a little less than two weeks and how grateful you are to have this commercial free commentary and music every <laughs> single day uh but i will tell you the number one thing what do you think as far as movies go nikki yeah what's the one that is getting the most money for advertising right now what is uh, the most advertised movie on tv right now on tv movie on tv well, or okay. tv show yeah see look at all the words <laughs> Even know. All right, here's what we're going to do. There's a movie coming to theaters. Yeah. All right. And they're running commercials for it. Oh, on so which is the one that's most advertised? What is the currently most advertised movie coming to theaters, but the advertisements are on TV? Well, see, I would have picked Black Panther, but that's already in theaters. So yeah, and that's, that's not, not it. That's not it. Um, I've seen a ton of press stuff for Red Sparrow. Okay, but that's but also that's not, not it. it. Can I have a hint? Um,. <laughs> Can't, just, can't we just spend an hour with you trying to figure out like what movies are coming out? I don't can't, think that's going to work. We just pl- can we drag just drag this going? game out forever? Can I guess letter by letter? Yeah. Um, let's see. Video games. Oh, re- Ready Player One. Ready Player One. It is the, like this week, it is the most advertised movie. I'm not surprised because I feel like outside of uh, uh, Black Panther, then I feel like this one is something that's been really, really pushed, almost like it kicks off the season. Yeah, I could see that. So I'm not surprised it's the most. Well, I'll tell you what, Nikki, Wrinkle in Time doesn't appreciate you saying that. Oh, that one too. Oh, I but don't know about that one. But it's not the most advertised movie on yeah. TV, just to be abundantly clear. So yeah, Ready Player One. We're like, okay, you're not like a video game person. No, or but I'll person. see that. Are I you enjoyed, interested in that? I loved the book. So I would, the book I would, was very good. I would definitely see that because I'm just interested in his take on it. The follow-up book to Ready Player One not is as good. not very good. Spoiler! <laughs> Spoiler! Spoiler! <laughs> Spoiler alert! It's that very is hard. Not a good book. It's very hard to hit two balls out of the park. Yes, <laughs> it's just well, very difficult, especially when you're trying to do the same thing but different. It just it didn't. But work. But again, Ready Player One, that book is incredible, and trailer wise, the movie looks really neat too. I'm going to be curious to see what that looks like. The one thing that I don't really like that I've seen so far for Ready Player One is that, of course, in the book, they talk about how different people have different avatars in the game. But I wish that in the game, or like in the movie, that the avatars would have still been the people. Sure. Because they're animated. And I look at that and I'm like, I don't like that. <laughs> like, it should be the person. Like, just, I understand that you, you had to give them a different, like, I understand why you did it. I Like, that's what they said in the book, whatever. But... I'm if this is just going to end up being like anytime they're in what's it called the oasis which yeah. is the virtual world like the, the world. it's just animated I think that's kind of a bummer might get a bit tired <laughs> I think that's kind of a bummer and but that's we'll what see. it and that's what it looks like it's going to be but uh then again you know Nikki I've been wrong before it doesn't happen often. But every so often he will be. Yeah, but I've been wrong before and I'm really curious about it. So Ready Player 1 comes out March 29th. March. Oh, it's all the way at the end of yeah, March. March. I thought 29th. it was in the middle of March. No, nope, it doesn't okay, look like it. So let's run it down then. Um, we've got uh, the Jennifer Lawrence naked movie, because that's all the press is about in that. Like, I don't even know what the Red movie's Sparrow. about. Red Sparrow. That's this weekend. Then next week, the weekend after, you've got, is it Tomb Raider? Maybe. I think. Then the weekend after that, or like somewhere in this order, there's a Wrinkle in Time in that mix, Pacific Rim's in that mix, and oh, then Ready Player right. One. Pacific Rim and Ready Player One. I think that's it. Now let's talk about Pacific Rim. <laughs> it's another time. <laughs> and a movie that I'm interested in, which is why I'm certain that it's going to fail. <laughs> 
One of the only things left that isn't owned by Disney. The Riot on Radio U. Nikki, your mother and I have been talking yes. about this summer yeah. and what <laughs> what we want for you yeah. this year. What do we what do we want to do? Um well there's been a lot of concern that we've had about your growing technology addiction. And so we think that it might be best uh, if you did a nine day a detox digital uh, detox. Are we offering those here now too? Well, well, this one's in Australia, but uh, I feel like if we do a little more looking around, we should be able to get you in place. Now, um, I tend to think for like if you're truly, really addicted, I think they offer more than just like a a nine day stay. Mm-hmm. Like you might have to go for like the full month. They say sometimes it takes a month to break off something. I watched. Well, I don't know. Like maybe they start at nine days. That's where the bidding starts, and it just goes up from there. I'm not that really sure. That feels more like it's one of those spa ones where you just can't have your phone. This does not look like a spa. It's this not a spa. It, well, as I'm watching the video, it's a lot. There's a lot of people yelling. Oh, never mind then. Like a so boot like, camp kind of. It's a little more boot campish, but I feel like you're going to come back from this. I don't con- like to be yelled at. You're going to be in better control of your life after this. Well, yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, Nikki, they're breaking you down. They are, and they like, never. You're be crying and stuff that's a given for when you sure. get home then every time you pick up your phone you're going to hear the yelling and you're going to associate it with that and you're going to be too afraid to even use your phone see i don't even think it's going to be that i think it's going to be one of those things where it's like man the freedom that you experience without your phone when you come back you're not going to want to go back you'll just be like no i can't well, i'm free now nine days <laughs> Yeah, nine, what do you Where's think? Where's this at? Or, oh, well, Australia, you said? This one's in Australia. But like I said, your mom and I are going to look around and see if we can find something, you know, else, something more, else for more you. More local. Yeah, you know, it's maybe not as far. but Well, I don't want to. I watched a documentary <laughs> on one. I don't know why, but I think it was in China. that was like they bring, and it was amazing. It showed like the mom dropping the daughter off. And the daughter's like 20. I mean, she's way too old for what happens when she gets dropped off, which is like screaming and yelling and like screaming at her mom like, I hate you. You hate me. Give me my phone. It was like crazy talking. You're like, is this for the camera? But they know they say that at least um, in some parts of Asia, especially not just with phones, but with certain video games. Yeah. That there's such an addiction and the time that is spent is just unbelievable that that's more of the boot camp ones where they're going to scream at you for at least 30 days. Did you know that you had your phone in your hand this whole time? I don't. Oh, my See, gosh. Don't you dare lie. Wait, wait, wait. She doesn't even I know don't have it that in she my... has her phone in her hand. That's, the, lying, that's the scariest part it's about right it. It's right there. It's not in my it hand. It sure is. I... It sure is. You're just, oh my oh, god! Oh man, I, you, this is the scariest. I'll show you how. This is the scariest part. I don't have it. This is the scariest part. <laughs> but I'm just just denying all of it. Why are you lying? You're Am, not a lying camp. You know what, Nikki? I'm tired of you lying to yourself. That's the part. I just I hate to see this. Leftovers from the most disgusting meal you've ever had. <laughs> it's the worst of the riot. Radio U. I don't know if you guys heard, but it's like the coolest thing that you can do right now is not be an Olympian. The coolest thing you can do right now is hate on the Olympics. That's and the, me, all the rage. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Nikki and I are freaking cool. It's like, <laughs> we're just hating on the Olympics all the Dude, time. Dude, I was talking to some like stranger, though, the other day, uh-huh. and they're like, yeah, what about the Olympics? And I mean, I didn't initiate this conversation. They're like, have you heard how what? down they are? What, you're you're just hanging out at McDonald's, <laughs> getting some sauces? And- <laughs> I forget where I was. I think I was just at the store, and I got talking to somebody, and I was like, oh, even strangers are telling me how bad the Olympics were this time. I don't know. Zach was into the Olympics. You know, our sports guy. But I mean, like, I guess he's supposed to be. Yeah, that's, I think, a part of the Zach, job. Zach and my mom. Like, my mom was way into that's it. That's the only two people who were accounted for watching the Winter Olympics. Yeah. So, I mean, like, let's not say ratings are down. Let's just say that they had uh, multiple age groups <laughs> that, like, it spanned generations. <laughs> that's that's how, how there you we go. do it. That's, that's some good. generation spanning coverage. That's very good. Zach and Obadiah's mom, really excited about it. So um, people are really like it's a 
everybody wants to take a pot shot at the Olympics. And you know what? And I mean this sincerely. If you enjoyed the Olympics this time around, I think that's great. Good for you. I, I actually, I, I watched uh, a couple of people posting their reactions on Facebook and stuff. And I thought, you know, I wish I was more interested in this. But I feel the same way about, like, the NBA and the NFL. I wish I was more interested in it. But I'm just not. Like, it's just kind of not for me. So if you enjoyed it, great. Uh, you are in an ever-increasing, my mi- or shrinking minority, but keep enjoying it. Uh, and everyone's talking about the fact that the Walking Dead, which I saw a lot of postings about on Sunday, and yeah, normally Sunday that night. that had been down for their other openings, <laughs> but this was their mid-season premiere. Well, The Walking Dead is down, but it's still more up <laughs> than, than the, Olympics. the Winter Olympics. <laughs> so, uh, The Walking Dead scored a three point six rating in viewers eighteen to forty nine. Now they still said that the Olympics had more total viewers, so fourteen point seven eight million. For The Walking Dead's 11.44 million, but the coveted 18, like what a widespread, 18 to 49. No, but that's the magic that's demo. That's it. They said that it had the higher rating. Mm-hmm. And they were the ones watching The Walking Dead. I don't even, and again, I swear, I'm, I'm really not trying to be whatever about it, but of course I will be whatever about it. I don't, I don't even have that many friends that are left watching The Walking Dead. Like, I used to have some people that live, like, two doors down from me mm-hmm. that, you know, you were talking about people throwing bachelor parties. They had the Walking That's Dead That's the they were with The yeah. Walking Dead. I checked their social media because I just wanted to know. Not a mention. Yeah, but did they still have their party? Did you see cars? No. I Like, I think they're out. Like, wait, what if they're going to someone else's house? And maybe it's the Carl thing. I don't know. But they, like, they went from being, like, you drive past their house on Walking Dead days. It looks and they like got a flag out. And, like, you know, like, all this stuff's going on. And it's just for the show. Yeah. So, Olympics are down. And we've we've said that a couple of times. They're saying the ratings overall were down. But that's part of a trend. The ratings on the Olympics have been falling since the early 2000s. And I guess it's just, what, ESPN2? Well, they're just, uh, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, again, I wish I was, I wish I was into it, but I just can't. Well, I don't want to because then that's uncool. In fairness, (laughs) like when I lived with my mom still. Was she always watching them? Yeah, man. I watched the Olympics with my mom all the time. And you would think I'd have some like uh, nostalgia for that. But I'm just like, eh, I got Netflix now. (laughs) It's a shame, right? Netflix is raising me, though. Teaching me a lot. (laughs) Riot's future, two words, goat farm. Radio U. Nikki, did you ever get around to seeing Guardians of the Galaxy 2? I did. I watched it when Netflix added it. You didn't go see it? No, I didn't see it in theaters. Oh, Nikki. Well, I mean, I was glad afterwards. I thought it was very good, but... But, Oh, here comes (laughs) the big Guardians of the Galaxy butt. No, I saw it after Thor, because I saw Thor in theaters this, Mm -hmm. this past year, and I thought that was way more funnier. And then going to see Guardians of the Galaxy right after, even though I know it came first. Yeah. It felt not as good. Oh, it's not as funny to be sure. But it's still good. Like it's, it's still a, funny, but it's it a couldn't different follow. Kind of movie, yeah, Nikki. it couldn't follow Thor up. You're being. I, I just feel like you're being unfairly hard on it, honestly. And you should take some of it back. I wish I watched it again. Yes. Should I, I pay for in it theaters. to be in theater so mm-hmm. that I could watch it that way and That's apologize? Exactly right. That's exactly right. Now, James Gunn, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy has caused a little Twitter storm with something that he said about a key character in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Nikki. Are you ready? Which one? Baby Groot. Yeah, Baby Groot. Remember how he opens up, dancing to Blue Sky, having a good time while everybody else is doing the fighting? Mm Mm-hmm. Baby Groot is not Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a new one? He is his son or his offspring. A lot of people have thought that, well, this is just Groot, but Groot is regenerated. That's what I thought. Yeah, I did too. But he's saying, no, no, no. This is a different Groot, and the Groot from the first movie is dead. Well, so nicely put. He died. He he gave his life to save his friends, and then this is Groot 2.0. So it's not the same. So the son of Groot or just another little thing? Basically, yeah. Like son. Uh, little tree. Little, little tree. Thing. Groot. Yeah, that's right. So. Well, that's not like life shattering. Like I can still make it through the day to day. Well, but I, 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 I I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised you didn't even care. see it in the theater yeah. that much. So like obviously you don't care about anything unless it's Goldilocks. But uh, <laughs> Locks of love. <laughs> 
Just let that blonde hair flow in the breeze. It was very funny. I agree with you. It was. (laughs) It was. Tiki Watiti. Mm -hmm. Did did a great job. He did. Did you see all the stuff about him yesterday that he's just like known for napping in public everywhere? Really? Yeah. They say that. I like him even more. I know. They say that like. Even on the set, like people would just constantly find him napping in between takes or like whatever, <laughs> that he just napped constantly. Uh, that was another Twitter item that emerged yesterday. Well, that now you have a comeback in case someone's like, what are you doing? You're sleeping and napping your life away. And you can explain, I mean, this guy directed and did this movie. And he still took a lot of naps. Of course, <sighs> you don't have that on your resume. So it's you're be just napping. But I, I don't think there's anything wrong with napping. Uh, Nikki obviously napped the entire time Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was in theaters. Again, I liked it. I just Mm -hmm. was glad I didn't pay any more money for it. I just dropped the Groot's dead, this is baby Groot on you, and you're like, oh, what's for breakfast? (laughs) Nap. I'll take a nap. I'll just be right here. It always just makes me want to watch what we do in the shadows. So (laughs) really, every time we talk about them, all of them. Nothing wrong with that. So that's the bigger point. (laughs) Want to know what the riot is doing right now? Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at riot.radiou.com. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. You know what? If you still want to talk about like tweet storms and even, uh, what's his name? James Gunn from Guardians of the Galaxy. Did you catch all the stuff with Chris Pratt and Kevin Smith over Wasn't the last that few days? Like a shame. <laughs> It's just totally a shame. Okay, so if you don't know who Kevin Smith is, he's a director. He's well known for doing movies like Clerks, Clerks 2. It's um, not a big yeah. list, but, you know, they're just not as well known. He's, well, he's also well known for, like, he's just a, like an avid podcaster. Wasn't he the one guy he's in direct- those something and something movies? Jay and Silent Bob. That. Yep. He's that guy, and he also, like now, he's a big fanboy of the CW, like, superhero shows. Like, he directs episodes of The Flash. I think he's directed a couple episodes of Supergirl. If you go back a couple of years, he was the guy who created that storm because of the, they saying he was too fat for the airline seat, oh, but he that's wasn't. that's right. That that's right. Thing. So, he's, he makes his way in the news every so often. Yeah, like, he, he gets noticed. Well, Kevin Smith had a massive heart attack over the weekend. Did you hear he said he thought that he had bad milk yes and like if he would not have gone in he they say pro- he would have died because it was the the main artery or, or they call whatever they call it the widow, widow maker, maker artery but like he's he's going to recover but it was a huge deal and it was interesting to me because he was like yeah i was thinking i'd just power through and they were like huh uh-uh, bro if you had powered through you'd be dead right now it's crazy right okay so in the middle of this chris pratt star of guardians of the galaxy and various other films he tweeted at Kevin Smith that he was praying for him. <laughs> and then the boy, trolls just attacked. Did people hate him. For the, like, just the amount of just, it, it was insane. Like, which is, it's odd. Like, I understand, like, there are plenty of us that don't believe in God or don't believe this, don't believe that, whatever, fine. But, like, the lack of civility of just like, hey, man, I'm going to pray for you. And people are just like, how dare you even say that? Well, I think for some. Um, so if you go back to the Florida school shooting, right. and if you even go to Vegas a little bit for that shooting, e- even farther back than that. But it, yes, it seems like there has become uh, it's become a popular trend when someone says, oh, I'm praying for this tragic situation, which a lot of people do, because that's a way that they feel like can it's, they contribute help them heal yeah. through what they're going through to, you know, because of what you know they're they're uh, seeing or experiencing, but then it became real popular to turn on people like that and say the prayers do nothing. Why are you're you're not even helping the situation? So I feel like after some of that, uh, it's become popular to jump on that. The one thing that I will address to that point is, you know what? Prayers are at least, I would argue, are at least as effective as trolling online. Like, it's at least that effective. Because that's what I found is, like, people are praying, people are trolling, the people are praying, and I would argue that your trolling is at the very least as effective. It's not as productive. My gosh. It's not, well, it's not as nice because people are like, well, Chris Pratt, I hope you show proof or something like that. It's like, just leave him alone. Yeah. He generally likes Kevin Smith, and it seemed like a nice gesture of, hey, I'm praying for you to get better. I'm wanting, I'm wishing you well. Yeah, well, it's interesting. James Gunn took to Twitter over the weekend. It was just like, hey, everybody, knock it off. Really? Like, 
if if Chris Pratt wants to pray for Kevin Smith, that's okay, and I shouldn't even have to say this. I know it's terrible, it, but you know what? It was James Gunn. His he had a series of like nine tweets or something about it that was so rational and so well thought out. And kind of one of his points was like, look, even if you don't believe in it, even if you don't agree, someone saying they'll pray for you is them saying. I want you to get, to get better. better. I wish you well. Just say thank you and move on if you can't do anything else. And I thought, you know, he makes a great, <laughs> he makes a great though, point. With some people, that point will go right over their head right. and they won't even understand it. So you just got to move on. Well, here's the thing I think is funny is Kevin Smith posted a video last night like, hey, I'm getting better, whatever. And he thanks his fans and Chris Pratt. Oh, that's my name. name. That's nice. For that. Well, Chris Pratt said he was such a fan of Kevin Smith, yeah. and Clerks is kind of what got him into wanting to become an actor. So I just thought, man, leave the guy alone. I don't know. My walk away from this is like I do think, and I I realize people say this a lot, but I think it's worth saying. I think we could be nicer to each other online. I mean, in person too, but like online, we could just be nicer. Every time you think to yourself, man, I am going to really zing this whatever. And I mean, you got friend, friends that you can zing. That's one thing. This this is something All else. Like, level. like if you're going to do this kind of ugly, nasty, whatever, take five minutes. Type your comment out on like a little notepad, like on your phone or whatever. And then wait five minutes and come back in five minutes and say, is this helping? Like, am I doing anything constructive with this? But that's not a troll, and and it's hard to I change know. a person. But you know what, Nikki? That's what I'm saying. They need to. But is that I'm trying to help you, like just five minutes, and then come back to it. I have had to learn that lesson. Just because the first thing you think is really <laughs> funny doesn't mean it should go out. Ever wonder what Nikki is doing when she isn't rioting? Find her Twitter feed at riot.radiou.com. Obadiah's is there too, but. Who cares what he's doing? I feel like no one is talking about it. And I mean, maybe it's just that it's been completely overshadowed by Black Panther. Because let's face it, everyone's talking about Black Panther. But Jessica Jones. Oh, that's almost out. Season two. Is it on the sixth? Well, I am getting conflicting results on when it's supposed to come out. I've seen people saying it comes out March 8th and March 9th. Oh, okay. So the 8th would be next Thursday. The 9th would be next Friday. I will tell you, I've noticed the last couple of big things from Netflix. They will say like a Friday, but it comes out sometimes even as early as the Wednesday before it. They're just not promoting it that soon. Hmm. So, so you never know when it might pop up. Yeah. So somewhere in like late next week. This says March 8th, so maybe it is Thursday. Like, that's three different places that are saying March 8th. I don't like that. We've suddenly gone from, it's not Friday anymore, because that I, was what I was used to, and now it's like, you never know. Do you know what? I kind of like the fact that it's not Friday, because I don't know about everybody else, but Thursday to me feels like a dead night in the week. I don't normally have something happening on Thursday, unless, of course, you're streaming the Riot's live but event on a Thursday that's night. That's just tomorrow. But, that's yeah. not every Thursday. So you wouldn't mind, because I think they want to grab you on a Friday and hope that you finish the whole thing over, over the, the weekend, weekend, where if you go on Thursday night, you start watching it, maybe you won't continue after Friday for whatever you do. No, for me, like a, thir- like a Thursday night is actually a great place to start it. I always feel like... Friday, it seems like I do have something going on. Uh, Saturday is, you know, it just depends on the weekend. But, like, get me on a Thursday night and then, you know, a lot get, of times let me get started. Do you think on, on Thursday night, you're like, well, I can stay up a little bit later because I can just be a little tired on a Friday. It's the yeah. last day of the week. So you don't mind. You push through. Man, Thursday's the new Friday. Mm-hmm. You just do what you want on a Thursday night. But uh, early reviews are in for Jessica Jones season two, and it's not... They're not. They're not great. What's the one that turned everything down for oh, Netflix? Iron uh, Fist. Iron, Iron Fist. And even the Defenders, because of Iron Fist, was a pretty big letdown. It just seems um, like it can't get that. Uh, I mean, before Iron Fist, the reviews were always super. Everything good, was great. Yeah, including the first Jessica Jones. Dude, I'm telling you, Iron Fist. I I really tried to enjoy it for what it was, and I ended up thinking that it was okay. But the big problem in the Marvel Netflix shows is that Iron Fist became the guy, like the thing that they all like. There was the reason they were all coming together and he became incredibly important. And oh, my God, you just stunk it all up so bad. (laughs) And well, I will say this about the Defenders, though. The first I think about six episodes of the Defenders are pretty good. Uh, And then it's the last two episodes. Something happens. I believe it's in episode six 
that after that, it just goes off the rail stupid. Really? And the, even Iron Fist was so much better in the Defenders. And I thought, you know what? They they figured it out. They realized they made a big mistake. And they ruin it at the end. And they're fixing it. <laughs> and then, oh my gosh, the last two episodes with Iron Fist, you're like, how stupid is this guy? Well, I guess we'll have to see for Jessica Jones Season 2. And that will be out on the 8th, March 8th. They're calling it a sophomore slump, though, again, every single review that I've looked at, they basically are saying, eh, it's okay, but it's not as bad as Iron Fist. <laughs> just to I, make sure. And I'm not just saying that. Like, a lot of people, that's just been their response. Like, it's okay, but it's not Iron I Fist. I feel bad for the guy who played the main character in Iron, in Iron Fist. Fist. It's like, hey, your whole thing's ruined it. Ooh. Yeah, and because they release it all at once, there's no correcting it. Nikki and Obadiah. Obadiah and Nikki. Love, hate, hate, love. All right, everyone in, let's go. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. You got up and exercised this morning. You had yourself uh, some breakfast. You're doing good. And uh, you know what? I just got to ask, have you done your urine therapy? Now, what is that? Well, have you done yours <laughs> no. today? No, I don't no? even know what that would be. Now, Nikki, I want you, using your vast knowledge yeah. of the universe, I want you to tell me what you think urine therapy could be. Two things. Um, either you, you know what, into a cup or something, and mm-hmm. you're using it like on your face or something. Okay. Or you're drinking it. You know what, Nikki? I just want you to or go ahead both? and. I want you to go ahead and clap yourself on the back there because it's, it? it's both. Yeah. It's both. Yeah. Uh, what we're looking at here is that. Uh, is it trend? It's making its way around the YouTube vloggers, like the health ones, saying, like, look, this is some of the best vitamins and minerals that you can get right right here. All right. What? It's going to turn back the aging process. And you can watch this woman gag as she's trying to drink oh, her. Oh, she does. Oh, I couldn't do it. I think sometimes of like if I'm on an island and I'm there's the no only water. one there and there's no water and they're like, okay, this is what you got to do. Yeah. I think it'd be helpful if no one knows, like if you are the only one there. Yeah. But it'd be very hard. A lot of people will tell you that you're in a sterile. I can tell you that it is in your bladder, but once it, you know, travels out, it's not sterile anymore. Just just want to let you know, because a lot of people say that, but that's something you should be aware of. Can't we just have a Gatorade or something or a coconut water? Like at this point, I just want you to know if my options are you're back on Diet Coke or you can just, you know, you're in therapy. I'm back in the diet. So what do they say, though, that it replenishes your your nutrients or are we going to live forever or what are they claiming? They're saying that like, oh, like your skin is going to be skin. so healthy. Yeah, but you, there's so other healthy. things you could do. And plus all these vitamins and minerals. Now, keep in mind, and I haven't had a chance to ask these people to their face, but, you know, it is true that there are water soluble vitamins leave your body through your urine and i can't believe we're having this conversation right now hey like you like to say it's medical it is. meaning like if you take a vitamin most of the time you just a, it a comes lot right of, out if it's a fat soluble vitamin like a vitamin d it sticks it you know your body handles different things differently but you know your urine is probably full of vitamins but do you know why it's full of vitamins because your body didn't need it so it let it just send it on out so you're basically like you'll take it and like it your body's going i don't want it i don't need it what are we doing <laughs> what? why, are, why we doing- are you doing this all right send the gag send the gag <laughs> they're, not, they're not gonna drink it if you start to throw up are they they are no uh, well like they've got several different <laughs> vloggers most of which have over a hundred thousand subscribers That's not enough don't follow them it's not enough so you're like what no in the bigger picture of the world if I had to have a choice, I would put it on my face. I wouldn't drink it. Like, that would be the out of the two. Oh, you mean like on your like face if, instead? Yeah, of, like if people are using well, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a <laughs> given. Just like, that that's out just, there in case we, sure. In case this comes up later in our life, they're like, hey, what do you think Nikki would like? I just want out of the two. That's it. I just use my urine for uh, elevator rinses. I don't use it for anything else. Just... You That's know. the story of the little 11 year old boy who peed all over the elevator in China. Yeah, you just, you know, all over the buttons and stuff, and you're good. That's what he did. I just do what the internet tells me. Gosh, I'm just. I, we're going to run out of stuff, and we're dangerously close to the other number, and I just don't want to even think about that. Listen, my solemn pledge to you if that ever becomes a thing, 
<laughs> we're not talking about it. Thank you. And we it's more than we're not talking about it. We're quitting. Okay, because we can't anymore. With virtual reality, the possibilities are endless. It gives us the ability to live out any of our wildest dreams. So maybe we can use it to pretend the riot doesn't exist. The riot on Radio U. So I'm pretty open about it. I try not to talk about it too much because this room is not uh, therapy and you guys are not my counselor. But like... But hop on the couch. Come on. (laughs) But I mean, like... (laughs) Depression is a real thing for me, especially this time of year. And it's been the last few weeks have been rough. Like it is. I have had a very hard time. Um, And like seeing the sun this week has been great. It's the reason I'm back to exercising in the morning because it's like, bro, you have to Depression is something that it's commonly faced the entire year. But during seasonal affective disorder, it's very, very heightened. It's rough. Uh, Yes. Like there are still times during the year, but like. At certain points during the winter, February, March, usually have a tendency to be really rough. And so uh, I'm telling you all this because, uh, you know, there are things that I do to help. Um, like the running seems to help more than almost anything else. Like it even seems like maybe better than lifting weights for me is running. And so I, I didn't work out for a couple of weeks because I was sick. And I think that's part of why it got even worse, you know, I because I was just not feeling well, et cetera, et cetera. But um, one of the other things that I do is spend time praying. And asking God for help and talking to God about stuff. And uh, you know what? There's this thing that I was reading just the other day, and I'm going to read it to you. And it says, open up before God, keep nothing back. He'll do whatever needs to be done. And I've been thinking about that a lot because I feel like a lot of times, you know, when you're talking to people, someone's like, how are you doing? I'm crazy depressed. And I'm like, great, man. How are you? And that's even how I say it. Like, you get really good at hiding it and just... You're not even intentionally hiding. It's just that's what you say to people. You know, I'm doing great, whatever. Uh, but, you know, here is God inviting us to talk to him and not hold anything back. Now, a lot of times when I talk to God, I'll be like, all right, God, um, help me to have a good day or help me to get a good night of sleep or something ridiculous. But I don't say to him, God, I'm so angry about blank. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't talk to God about that. But I came across that this week. And so that's what I've been doing. Every single irrational, ridiculous thought that I've been having, I'm just like, God, I am so sick and tired of blank. Uh, for me, depression often is irritation and anger. You might not know that, but they that that's actually that's, that's, a, that's a thing like that. That is a thing. And so I've been taking it like whether it's a person that's making me mad or a situation that's making me mad or for some random reason, I remember something from 20 years ago and I'm just like, I'm so sad about that. I can't believe my mom threw away that stuff. It, whatever. Like you, you tell me what it is for you, but I mean, giving all of that to God and literally talking to God about all of it. Like, all right, God, I'm mad about this and I'm mad about the, or I'm unhappy, whatever everything with this attitude of like, all right, God, I need help and I can't pretend in front of you. Like, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like right now, I want to invite you into a relationship with God where you don't have to pretend at all. You can be 100% the person that you are today. God can take it. God can take how happy you are or how whacked out depressed you are, like wherever you're at today, God can take it. And you can talk to him about anything. It says right here, open up before God, keep nothing back. So what if you're even mad at God about something? What if something happened in your life and you're like, it shouldn't be this way and you're mad about it? You could talk to God about being mad with him. You can talk to him about anything. And I love this. It says he'll do whatever needs to be done. So look, you open up and talk to God about what's going on. He's going to take care of doing what needs done. If you don't have a relationship with him, I, I really wish you wouldn't do life alone. I really wish that you would take time and invite God in and let him help you the way he helps me. Just say, Jesus, I need that. I want you to come into my life. I want you to fill me with your spirit. And here's what's going on. And you know what? Today, I want you to talk to God, and I want you to hold anything back and know that God is going to do what needs to be done. He's going to help you. Send your complaints regarding that worst of the riot moment to fire Obadiah at RadioU.com. Well, I know this is going to shock you, but people are mad on the Internet. Again? What the what? What What the what? Stop shocking us with your lies. People are mad at Barbara Streisand. And if you said, who's that? Don't worry, old movie star. Is she a singer? Singer, yes. Singer and movie star. Do you know why they're mad? 
because she cloned her dog. Boom! <laughs> Nikki knows about dog clones. <laughs> I'm in on all the dog news. Nikki's got all of it. If it's about it. an animal, I got all the trending stuff. Yep, she cloned her dog twice. So she's twice? got two, two dogs running around that are clones of her favorite dog. And then she bought a third dog that was the sister or something, of, or niece of her favorite dog or something. Boy, so she she's really likes a particular type then. <laughs> she cloned her dog. It's a little weird. Like, I get it. I mean, I saw The Sixth of Day starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he went to repet and got the family pet cloned and all that stuff. So that way you're, okay, so let's track along with if you wanted to clone a dog. So then you're Oh, kind, I want to clone a dog, Nikki. So if you're kind of guaranteeing or you have a better chance of the dog acting like how your dog acted. I mean, looked, I guess. Looking like how your dog acted or looked. Well, think about I, my thought is, one, just because something's genetically identical doesn't mean that it's going to be the same person. But it might, personality-wise, have the same traits that you loved about your pet. It might. might. It might. But see, you know, do circumstances shape pet personality? To some extent, we know they do because you can make a dog mean. Thereby, if you're treating it the same way, do you make it kind and then it becomes... It must have worked because, she. I mean, she did it twice. I got to tell you, Nikki, like, you know, there's Sixth Day, but there's another movie that I'm thinking about. And book. Are you familiar with Pet Cemetery? I've not read it, but isn't gra- it Stephen King? The ground goes bad. <laughs> and, and all so these when, pets rise when up. When the pets come back, they're not the same. How much does this cost to clone your dog? That's what I would be afraid of. Like, man, I've cloned my dog and you're so excited and then you wake up and it's got devil eyes and it's gnawing your brain in your sleep. Okay, no one's thinking that. But you're like, breaking how, the laws of how, nature. How much does it cost to clone your dog? Does it say? I don't have an answer for that. Because like when you I'm lose sorry. your pet, you're so sad and you're like, I'll do anything and oh, no. it crosses your mind. Here's what I got in this article from Variety. Uh, they say cloning dogs costs around one hundred thousand dollars. Whoa! Which tells you that, that who's doing that? <laughs> Barbara Streisand. That's is. it. Yeah, that's expensive. I'd have to let my dog go. I can't do that. See, but here's the thing, Nikki, is that you're not in the financial position she is. Let's say you've got. I know she's got more of this. Let's say you've got fifty million dollars. Yeah. And you're wildly successful. You own multiple houses. You know all this kind of stuff. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Your dog dies, and you're like, you know what? I don't want anything but my dog back. And someone's like, got it. Got you. No problem. It's 100000 each. She's like, that is, that's changed me. That's like you being like, man, I'm having a rough day. I really like a McNugget. <laughs> Done. We Done. can do that. <laughs> you got that. You had that money in your pocket to yeah. go get a McNugget. I, I guess I understand. But I know when you're so sad when you lose a pet. But then uh, I have always found when you are ready and then you go and get another pet. Then you have new types of memories with their personality and their makeup and stuff. Well, I'll tell you, PETA is on your side, Nikki. Yeah. Because PETA is just like, can we please? And this the, is a, just the to be clear, there. we're paraphrasing here. Uh, but PETA basically is like, look, sorry you lost your dog, but we got shelters full of animals. Let's go get shelters of animals and stop trying to clone our pets. And learn to love that dog, That's, which I'm sure would be just as special. So, ladies and gentlemen, PETA spokesperson, Nikki. Yay! I agree with them. Please don't clone your pet. Well, and we yeah. never thought of that for $100,000 anyways. But in case you ever make a lot of money and you're like, well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? Like, let's let's clone. I mean, there we've got clones of Nikki and I. What, do you think we're the originals? That you are the clone, which is why you're coughing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you see, his clone's to, going bad. Starting to break down. You like, need a new one. Sir. They're going to replace me. Like after the show, actually, it might be a new one tomorrow night. Actually, <laughs> this was the worst of the riots, and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. <laughs> The Riot exists because Radio U exists. And Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate. He's peeing all over the buttons. All over the buttons. All over the buttons.